What's up guys, Answer Nose Hoops back today with another video. And today we are covering more NBA playoffs. And today I want to talk about the 2-0 Timberwolves and how quite frankly, I believe they've probably shocked a lot of people, myself included. Now I thought this series was going to be hyper competitive. And uh, well, first of all, the Timberwolves kind of said, uh, yeah, we're good on that, buddy. Uh, and I actually have Phoenix winning this in my predictions video. But today... Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We're trying to hit 1K subs. We are at 775. Do me a birthday favor, y'all. Let's get some subs. Let's get to 800 by the end of April. So, Timberwolves have a 2-0 lead, right? And the biggest, arguably the biggest reason, Rudy Gobert averaging 16-13-2 with two stocks on 71 from the line, or 71 from the field and 86 from the free throw line, which for Rudy... That's incredible. But let's get into what Rudy Gobert has done to help make this series so different. And why the Timberwolves have taken such a drastic lead. And honestly, barring some crazy injury, I don't really think they're going to lose it either. So, here you got Booker, right? And Rudy, again, I've talked about this in my Contender or Pretender series. Rudy's willingness now to attack at the perimeter is so much better than it was in Utah, right? And part of it is he has more competent help, right? But Rudy's presence is just so, like, look at this. Like, he just keeps up with Booker, and he forces Booker to settle for these jumpers, right? So much so, in fact, that when you guys go to the NBA website, and you're going to go to a specific player, and you're going to go to, I believe it's, like, general and then matchups, Devin Booker is one for six when guarded, by Rudy Gobert. And a big reason is that Rudy is forcing Booker to take uncomfortable or contested threes. Right. So here's a clip, and this is the one make Devin Booker gets. So I know what you're thinking. Imster, I thought it's a positive video. This possession, I think, already shows what's so different about Rudy, or maybe just the, the team defense, whatever you want to say. It's just what's different about this Timberwolves team this time around versus when we've seen them in the past. Look at what Rudy's doing here. The footwork, right? Keeping up with Booker. Like, even though Booker gets a little bit past him, he's still attached to him at the hip. And that's an extremely tough shot anyways. Right? Like, that is no easy bucket. Uh, Rudy is making him work for it, right? Like, look at this. Even here, he's in the passing lanes, Right? Conley gets over, and Rudy's reading this possibility of the transition play because they're only up 13. So, right, like that could be a huge bucket to get, but nope. Rudy forces it back out, going over, right, and gets fouled. Booker, KD's going over, and again, Rudy's just attentiveness because, understandably so, right, you see Nurkic is rolling to the rim. So, KD makes the right idea of a play, but instead, boom. Rudy gets it, helps start to force a transition play for the Timberwolves. And then I want to talk a little bit about Rudy offensively. I love this. I know what you're thinking. It's weird. Why does Rudy have the ball and why is he push? But I love the assertiveness of what Rudy's been doing. That is what's different about this team, right? Look at this. Pushing, pushing, taking advantage. Boom. Now, at first, this is called, I believe, an offensive uh, foul. Uh, the Timberwolves would challenge this because, and one, come on, man. Like, what Rudy's been doing for this team has been so helpful, right? Cat over to Conley, right? Rudy waits, kind of slips towards the dunker spot. Boom, McDaniel's right around. Beal takes too long. Nurkic, get out of the way, you too little, right? What Rudy has done for this team has been incredible. And I think this series and the way Rudy's played and even the way um, the next guy in the video we're going to talk about has played is part of the reason why box scores isn't the only thing that you got to look at. You have to watch the game. You have to watch the film because Rudy only, if I told you Rudy Gobert only has two stocks or steals and blocks, I don't think you believe me, right? The way everyone's been hyping up what Rudy's been doing. But it's what Rudy's been doing as an individual defender and forcing tough shots. But that won't show up on the shot chart, right? That won't show up on a box score. It's not going to say, oh, Booker is one for six when guarded by Rudy Gobert. 
Nope. It's just going to say it's two stocks. So you're like, oh, we had a cool game. Nothing crazy. And the other player I want to talk about and a huge, huge reason that this team is in the position they're in as well. Jaden McDaniels averaging 17, 7 and 2 with 1.5 stocks with 54 from the field, 33 from three, which could be a little bit better, right? And 86 from the line. And Devin Booker is also one for six when being guarded by Jaden McDaniels. But let's look at what McDaniels has done to help impact the series, right? McDaniels sinks. Uh, you see Grayson Allen, uh, unfortunately injured, I believe, at this point and probably done for the series. Sinks over to try and help. Ant, beautiful read, right? Part of what I've said to Anthony Edwards stepping up as a playmaker is going to make the team extremely dangerous. And now what I've been loving to see is when McDaniels is actually going to attack the rim and the IQ we see, right? So he gets KD, right? Boom. Shoulders down. Creates that little bit of separation. And KD's kind of just keeping his hands down to stop anything. And Nurkic is at his hip. So there's not really too much Nurkic can do. So again, easy, beautiful shot, right? And I love here, he takes advantage. Uh, McDaniels took advantage of Booker. If we notice, Booker sort of shoves him out the way. But McDaniels uses that to his advantage to go, hey, wait a minute. Now I have the inside, right? And this is just a tough shot, by the way. But moments like that are what you need to win, right? And I love here McDaniels fighting over the pick, getting behind Booker, sticking to him. Boom. Blocked, right? Like, look at that. Like, it's the patience, right? I talk about that all the time on the channel, but the patience is immaculate, right? And McDaniels just boom again, right? Like, and what I love about this too is how he kind of keeps not flat footed, but McDaniels doesn't rise at all. He just stays with Booker and you can see Booker tries to get a foul call. So McDaniels goes, let me just get the ball out of the way. Even if it's your ball, you're not getting the shot up, right? And that alone has been a huge reason that McDaniels has been doing what he's doing, right? Let me just make sure. Okay. So, the final guy we're going to talk about. Obvious. Anthony Edwards, averaging 24, 7, and 7 with three stocks, 47 from the line or from the field, 43 from three, and 80 from the line. All right. And mind you. What it shocks me about this because I know Ant was incredible game one, but I knew he was awful, at least shooting wise, in game two. So I was thinking, oh, his stats are probably gonna be a little, you know, weirdly in between. This man's almost putting up 50 and 40. Like, it's insane. But let's get into it, guys, right? So Ant on Royce O'Neal sticks on him, boom. When O'Neal goes over to his other hand, you see Ant gets a you know his hand on it and goes to immediately start pushing for a transition play. And then there goes Bradley Beal. A little bit of a shove by Ant. Gets his hand on it, right? And this is a good read by Ant because he doesn't try and just swipe for the ball because if he does, Nurka Shorter just has a free little push with Beal trying to come back in and then, you know, you can do something like that. But instead, Ant gets the ball as Nurka goes to grab it. To make an uncomfortable possession. And then Jaden McDaniels, right, gets the foul. So Ant sticking on Beal again. Just look at that. Incredible defense, right? But they're pushing. Gets the ball back and brings it up. Ant gets KD. Shoves. Pushes him back. Bang. And according to Clean the Glass, he's 50% from the three uh, from the midi so far. He's only taking about 16 shots. But if that's what Ant's going to give you... Hey, man, that's unstoppable, right? Ant forcing the turnover from KD, pulls it up, gets Booker one-on-one. -on -one. Booker's just, I don't even know what he's doing at this point. Man, it's just running. Boom, rose up from the free throw line. That's just, you're not going to win a series if, if you're allowing a, a superstar caliber player like Anthony Edwards, right? Again, beating Beal, boom, boom. Like, that's incredible basketball. To be 100% honest, I have to give a shout out to Chris Finch. Um, what he has done schematically with this team, taking advantage of the fact that Phoenix doesn't really attack the rim. They don't necessarily have a great rim uh, attacker or a guy who gets put, who 
who puts good rim pressure. What he has done is basically said, we're going to take your perimeter away. Go ahead and try and attack the rim. We got Rudy and we got Cat, we got McDaniels and we have Ant. Go ahead and try it. Right. And basically they've paid every time. So let me know what you guys think down below. Are you guys shot the Timberwolves are up 2-0? Do you think that they can go for a clean sweep? Do you think this will be in five, six? Do you think the Sun still managed to pull it out? Like, do you think Booker, Beal, and KD turn this series around offensively and they just take over? As always, guys, this is Emster Nose Hoops. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Have a beautiful rest of your day, guys. Peace out.